So team, keep it clean. I knew I was going to see y'all later on today. I figured it was going to happen, but I did not know it would be because of the L.A. Ravens striking again. Subscribe to the channel, turn notifications on, run them likes up because we got to talk about these Baltimore Chargers. So this offseason has been a busy one for the Chargers because they've been doing everything that they possibly can to be the Baltimore Ravens. Let me remind you of how. Well, their general manager is former director of player personnel, right? Former Ravens director of player personnel, Joe Hortiz. Their offensive coordinator is former Ravens offensive coordinator, Greg Roman. The running back that they signed, former Ravens running back, Gus Edwards. Offensive lineman they signed, former Ravens offensive lineman, Bradley Bozeman. The tight end that they signed, former Ravens tight end, first round draft pick, by the way, Hayden Hurst. And now, now you add former Ravens, was never a starter, but former Ravens fullback, Ben Mason. <laughs> you think these charges respect the Baltimore Ravens? Now, I get it. Their general manager is the one that makes the moves and the one that really builds the team. Uh, that being Joe Hortiz. Uh, and now he's getting his first crack at being a general manager, which is great for him. I do commend him on his work. But these guys, you could tell that he, he really appreciated where he came from and loves where he came from and will never forget and doesn't forget and hasn't forgotten where he came from, that being with the Baltimore Ravens. And I mean, hey, the Chargers wanted to be the Ravens so bad. They said, you know what? John Harbaugh ain't going nowhere. Let's get old Jim. Jim, come on. Run the show, baby. And there you have it, man. So with the Chargers, them signing Ben Mason. I love it, man. I love it. It's like the Chargers, they've been, they've been trolling the Ravens heavy. All off season long. All off season long. But I, I, seriously, though, I do think it's just a really a sign of respect. Uh, it, it's a, a sign of respect for how the Baltimore Ravens operate. Again, Joe Hortiz being the general manager, uh, he knows the ins and outs of the Baltimore Ravens. He was there for a long time, worked his way up, and now he worked his way out, and now he's doing his own thing in L.A. But I do think it's a deep sign of respect for uh, how the Ravens operate, um, deep sign of respect for the work ethic of their coaching staff, or the work ethic of all those players that they brought in. Um, and with some of them, they were recent former Ravens, uh, but some of them were not so recent former Ravens, but all of those players that we named, they all got their start one way or another, drafted, undrafted, uh, drafted high, drafted low. They all got their start with the Baltimore Ravens. Ben Mason. But Ben Mason, he's somebody that John Harbaugh would talk about and say that he is a very, very hard worker. He said, uh, despite him not even really getting no playing time, I, I really don't remember. I think maybe there was maybe COVID years. I don't remember how long Ben Mason been around for, but I don't remember him getting on the field like ever. I, I really don't remember. But anyway, um, Ben Mason is somebody that Harbaugh always talked about being a very hard worker. And despite him not getting much playing time, um, Harbaugh talked about how he would be one of those people that's, uh, that's first day of practice and last out and whatnot. So that's a good thing for him. I always thought the year that we drafted Ben Mason, I thought that that was going to be a wrap for Pat Ricard. I really did. Uh, I thought Ben Mason was going to be the Pat Ricard replacement. Uh, the year that we drafted Ben Mason, again, I forget when it was. I just knew, oh, oh, okay. Because don't nobody draft a fullback. And, yeah, I mean, don't nobody draft a fullback at all. Uh, but if you draft in a fullback, then, yeah, he's definitely going to be the replacement. Nope. <laughs> he certainly wasn't. And there's still a lot of questions about that draft and that draft pick and whatnot. But mm, we talk about that another time. Well, we probably won't. But anyway, um, with Ben Mason, I remember the whole the whole ordeal. I mean, it was always meant to be uh, after Ben Mason left the Ravens for a little bit, but then came back to the Ravens. Uh, it was always meant to be that he was going to leave. It, it, it was just a matter of time that he left the Baltimore Ravens. Because I remember uh, when they, him and the Ravens, they agreed to like one of them wink, wink deals. Uh, those wink, wink deals, not, not Don Martindale, wink, but one of the deals where you it's like a handshake deal like okay hey ben mason we'll, we're gonna cut you we're not gonna cut you with the intentions of you remaining a free agent but we're gonna bring you back probably put you on the practice squad you know how it goes we got to do some roster maneuvering and whatnot 
Oh, okay. All right, Ravens. Thanks. Okay, I got you. So they did. <laughs> they did that with Ben Mason years ago. Years ago, y'all remember the story? They did that with Ben Mason, and um, apparently they it, it agreed to one of those wing wing deals. Uh, so they cut him. They released him, and. <laughs> <laughs> I remember it was a presser And Harbaugh was like Hey well I mean a, a reporter asked Harbaugh Hey what's going on with Ben Mason Where's Ben Mason at Where, What happened to Ben Mason And Harbaugh was like "Oh, I, I'll let him address that when he wants to address it I'll let him answer that question. And the way that he said it, it was like, it was Snappy Harbaugh Cause we, can, we get a lot of different versions of Harbaugh throughout the season It depends on what his mood is And, and I get it uh, But Harbaugh he obviously wasn't feeling Ben Mason And I was like oh, what's going on what was that about? The way that he said it I was like, whoa. And then, like, an hour, maybe two hours later, like, oh, Ben Mason, former Baltimore Raven, assigned with the New England Patriots. I was like, oh, okay. That's why he was acting like that and said Ben Mason's name with that, just that smug. Yeah, he wasn't feeling him at all. Um, so, but Ben Mason ended up coming back anyway uh, a little later on. Uh, but now, hey, now he gets his real opportunity. Uh, and what helps him out um, is that obviously familiar with the system that they run <laughs> or that they're going to run over there uh, with the Chargers being Greg Roman's system. But um, this will be a, a cool opportunity for him because I'm, I don't know how much to what extent since uh, Gus Edwards, he was running with uh, the, the, the starters here and there and probably the two. So I'm not sure what extent. Uh, ben Mason's relationship is with him But maybe they did get A little bit uh, involved in Maybe, maybe he, Ben Mason was able to block for him At some point in practice Maybe Maybe uh, But Yeah so but it, it shouldn't be nothing to pick that up um, So that's Happy for Ben Mason School for Ben Mason Good opportunity for Ben Mason uh, And now He'll be blocking he'll, he'll be blocking with a lot of Ravens Hayden Hurst gonna be over there blocking Bradley Bowden gonna be over there blocking I'm sure Greg Roman I mean excuse me Not Greg Roman Gus Edwards at some point He gonna be over there blocking too um, Justin Herbert uh, He gotta be looking around Like Okay <laughs> This is gonna be different Because The way that the You look at the charges and, and I don't know all the ins and outs of everything And all the operations And every single roster move that they did but when you look at the Chargers and you see how they're moving, at least from an outsider's perspective, Chargers fans would obviously know a lot more than me. But when you look at how they're moving from the outside in, it does seem very 2020 Raven-esque. Uh, because you look and they got rid, and I know a lot of it had to do with money, but they got rid of uh, Mike Williams, top receiver. They got rid of Keenan Allen. Didn't want to take a pay money. One of the top receivers. They got rid of them too. It was said on the defensive side of the ball that hey, they still had money problems, but they made it work with Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack. So they made it work on the defensive side of the ball as far as keeping their talent, the most talented people. But on the offensive side of the ball, especially at wide receiver, they're like, no, this ain't working out. You got to go. So, hey, <laughs> shout out to him, man. Um, but, again, I don't know all the ins and outs. Of everything, but that, that's what it looks like to me. Um, but, you know, with Greg Roman's system that they put a heavy emphasis on tight ends. Uh, with Justin Herbert, um, I do think that, and, and I've said this multiple times before, uh, that the efficiency is going to go up. The yards, passing yards are going to go down. Uh, the efficiency is going to go up. Uh, so I think touchdowns will stay about the same. I think interceptions will definitely uh, go down, though, for him. Uh, so things are going to be different for Justin Herbert. Maybe he's going to be running a little RPO. Uh, he's going to learn how to take off a little bit more and whatnot. So we, we're going to see how he looks in that system because as we know uh, we've seen a lot of mobile quarterbacks be in that system Alex Smith for a little bit but then we saw Colin Kaepernick he did his thing um Tyrod Taylor uh when Greg Roman was in Buffalo uh and then obviously Lamar Jackson in Baltimore when Greg Roman was there uh so these mobile quarterbacks they they be doing their thing in that system uh, as far as taking off uh, So will Justin Herbert This is going to be a new age 
Justin Herbert. This is the, the, the Justin Herbert of 2024. It's going to be nothing like you've ever seen.